This is going to be a more detailed tutorial because I'm going to go over a few different features within the app. I'm working off of a Mac, but the exact same UI you'll find on PC. So whatever I do here on the Mac is going to apply 100% identical to the PC version. Well, let's get started by firstly importing a couple of videos. And I can import all the videos in batch, so I don't need to select and import individual videos. Now, once I have imported the video, the software will automatically start tracking the, the well, the bow flight in, in each video. If for some reason um, a video has more shots or, um, or you, it hasn't picked up a shot because, well, basically it tries to pick up a shot by sound, so it sets the impact frame according to when it hears a shot. If, for example, it doesn't hear it or hears it in the wrong position, just go to add shot and um, select the impact frame. So in this, in this case scenario, we have selected, well, it has auto automatically selected the impact frame correctly for us, and we can tell by the little blue dot um, that automatically displays here where the impact frame was set for us. If there was another shot here, I could potentially set another shot and just press accept, and it will just uh, track the second shot in that same video so I can actually have one video with multiple shots and either the app will automatically pick up each shot or I just go in here and manually add another shot uh, in that same video. And I can jump between videos with that pull down options menu right here. So I have all those videos I can add new impact frames to and add more um, trajectories. And that would be the case only and only if um, for some reason, it didn't automatically pick up the impact frame and didn't start automatically processing the video that you have just imported. But in this case, we have six great tracking videos. And I'm going to go over a couple of different features that might be beneficial um, for you for, let's say, that's a 101 crash course on Shot Tracer Pro. So um, let's start with the more ov obvious ones is um, let's change the line color. And obviously, I can change the line color over here to whatever color I, I, I really want. And I can add different effects. For example, I want to add um, a 3D more look, kind of looking line uh, or a pointy 3D line where, where the end of the line is more pointy than, than rounded. I want to have a uh, rounded 2D line. That's kind of my favorite depending on the camera angle. And most importantly, one thing you'll notice in that video is camera angle. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that when filming, and that's really important, you film off a tripod because otherwise tracking might not work out too well. If you um, basically film while holding the camera in your hand, the, the, the video is going to become too shaky and it's probably not going to track very well for you. So just make sure you 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 have that camera or the phone on a tripod locked down so it's not moving and you want to make sure that the camera is positioned not straight down the line behind you but a little bit to the side to the right of you so it has a great vantage point onto the ball flight hence it can only track if it actually sees the ball flight so if your body obstructs basically the vision or, or the vantage point from camera to ball um, then it won't be able to track it. So you want to make sure that you give it a great vantage point just a little bit to the side of you, just like in this video. So even if you hit it left and low, it's still going to track it. All right, so um, we can now obviously uh, change also the effect the line is going to have on afterwards, after I hit it. So I can add a, um, a fade out after, after basically it, the, the, the tracer line lands and then I can set after how many seconds the effect should take place. So, exactly, for example, I want to fade out after here high tracer. Well, that's that's a very high number. That would be, but let's say two seconds. I want to hide the tracer after two seconds, meaning that it's gonna fade out after the line ends. After two seconds, it has ended. Um, I'm, here, tracer start size will go with a thicker start and then with tracer end size we can make it thinner meaning the descent of the line is going to get thinner or we can make it really thick let's say 100 
that's something we really don't want. <laughs> so I, I usually go with around 15, 20 to give it a nice, nice uh, subtle um, effect of um, the, the line go getting further away, getting thinner uh, from, from its original uh, position where it started, away from us. Then we can turn off and on the shadow. You can actually change the color of the shadow, but I would suggest just keep it at the stock color, just a dark kind of uh, darkening grayish, blackish uh, shadow line. And then with uh, the tracer color, uh, we, just, we just talked about it, but I can also um, set the alpha so I can make it more or less uh, transparent, like you can see here. And let's make it more transparent. I should have talked about that before. Uh, I I just I enjoy that red tracer color, so I'm just gonna leave it with red and make it a couple like the 20% trans, uh, transparent, so that gives it a nice little uh, contrast contrasty look to it, so you can see it very well. And then I I can also decide if I want the start of the tracer to um, fade in or fade out. So as you can see here, uh, we have that's a that's a fade non-faded line, and it could be a teardrop or or a cut depending on what kind of line um, type or tracer type you actually select. And uh, we'll stay with um, pointy 2D rounded or rounded, and it gives you a little teardrop at the beginning of the line. Now let's go with fade in so we want to make sure that the tracer line fades in at the start and then at the end we could um, let it fade out so you, as you can see here just get a little bit more transparent um, with the line reaching the landing spot i think one big um, one big factor that everybody should know within shot tracer pro is what lock peak mean means and lock peak basically locks the peak um, when you move the line and I think a great example video is this one right here no this one right here yeah so here because we can see it so well as I change the landing spot because the app is gonna track and calculate your landing area but if you want for example to change it because you don't don't agree with it or you want to move it closer to the to the pin uh, you can do so manually but if the tracking works well, which it does in most of the cases, you'll see that the peak, meaning the apex of the line, does not move with the change of the landing spot. Why is that? That's because tracking uh, in this video, for example, has been uh, very good and it was able to track the ball all the way until the peak of the apex and therefore the app does not suggest to move the, the peak proportional to the landing spot. If you want to force that, however, and you want the peak to move proportional to the landing spot, make sure to uncheck lock peak shift. So you want to make sure it's unchecked. And then as you move left and right the landing spot, you'll see that the entire peak shifts and moves proportionally to the new landing spot. The disadvantage here is that um, if you export that video and you move that peak and the landing spot so far away from its tracked position, then the line towards the peak, the ball is, you, you'll see that the, the ball is taking a different path than the peak is uh, set. So the line is going to be offset from the, the ball position in each frame. So if it's a well-tracked video, just make sure that you have peak shift locked. If you, for some reason, uh, found yourself in a badly tracked video, then yes, of course, you can turn off peak, sh uh, peak shift and and uh, and then the line is gonna uh, look better when you move the landing spot. Next up, we have high tracer, which we just discussed a, a couple of seconds ago. Um, flight time, self-explanatory. You just, if you want to change how long the the ball, uh, I mean, the line is in motion, you can change that with flight the flight time editor. Straighten line, just uh, don't think I can show you here because they, these, all those lines look pretty straight, but sometimes those lines might get a little kink in the, at the start of uh, their flight. That's 
mainly because um, some camera movement and the line didn't come up straight. So it's super central to have the camera locked down on a tripod. But, uh, but that basically just straightens out the line at the beginning. Just You don't have to touch it, just leave it at four. Um, and then you can set an outline thickness. The outline thickness, what it does, uh, let's use let's use a video where the line is nice and in vision here. Um, the outline thickness gives you the opportunity to kind of essentially customize the tracer line more. Uh, it gives you the ability to outline the, your tracer line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the line thickness at the start to 150 so you can better see what's going on here. And then I'm going to set the outline color to, let's go with something that you'll see, like a blue. Um, and then get the thickness to 40. See, so I don't know if you'll see it because it's a screen recording and the quality might not be the highest. But you see how, how there is an outline that comes up, outlining that, that red line, basically, giving it more of a pop. And then if I wanted to, I can, I can add a blur to it. But don't overdo it. <laughs> I think it's just gonna it's gonna look a little bit too too much. But the great thing about Shot Tracer Pro it gives you the ability to fully customize your lines. So actually do whatever you want with it. Be creative. We want to see some really creative lines, and and we really love seeing that uh, on social on YouTube because Shot Tracer Pro gives you really that that ability to create your own look and feel Shot Tracer line, which is great. But let's head back to some of the other features. So if we wanted to add, for example, uh, a, the, the apex of the ball flight, we could do that right here. We can change between feet, feet and meters. We can also add a distance, uh, also yards or meters, and you can change the values to whatever you see fit in case they didn't come out right for you. Um, that's basically a manu manually editable um, Apex and uh, shot distance um, uh, editor. You don't see those uh, pop-ups just here in that preview. We will add those pop-ups to show also in the preview um, and give you the opportunity to move the pop-ups left or right of the line manually. But for now, it's just said that it, upon exporting, those will be overlaid on top of, well, on the side of the tracer line. Uh, and of course, if you guys have any uh, specific wishes and features you would love to see in Shot Tracer Pro, just let us know and we'll definitely talk to you about how we can make those features reality. But let's get back to some um, of our Shot Tracer Pro features that are available right now. And one of the, I think, really cool ones is um, the Swing Tracer, the Swing Tracer effect right here. So in order to use Swing Tracer, you basically just... Um, either activate swing tracer feature in the, in, the, in the box here, or you go to that thumb wheel, that mini thumb wheel um, gears icon here on the, on the miniature of that video and activate edit swing. So the first thing you'll have to know is again, make sure the camera is on a tripod steady um, and does not move while filming. And the second thing is you want to film at a high frame rate. We suggest anything about above 60 frames per second. 30 is not going to create a great swing tracer. So you want to be above 60. And then once you have imported your, your, your swing tracer video, this one is, for example, a 60 FPS video. Um, you just want to make sure that the app has automatically correctly set the first uh, few frames or that frame just before you start um, your backswing and to, and in order and that's why is it important because for now you'll be manually keyframing uh, each frame well not each frame you can actually use the space bar uh, to skip a bunch of frames as many as you want really to keyframe the position of the golf club and you want to make sure that you're always keyframing a reference spot on the core, on the club. So if I were to do, uh, for example, on one fr on one frame, I would uh, set this part of the club, and on the other one, a shaft. The the, the swing tracer wouldn't look too great. So I want to make sure that I 
I, I set myself a reference. For example, here I'm setting uh, center of the of the club face, and I am using this reference to do my manual swing tracing. One thing you, you've noticed probably here is I'm not skipping multiple frames as soon as the club isn't traveling anymore in more or less a straight line. As soon as the club starts moving in a more circular motion, I wanna make sure I hit each or every second frame. And that is in order to make sure that the swing tracer comes out nice and smooth and rounded instead of edgy. Uh, especially on a downswing that ha doesn't have a lot of frames, uh, you want to make sure that you select every frame um, thereafter on the downswing. And again, make sure you always um, select the reference, the same reference on the club head or um, on the shaft, whichever you prefer, throughout the entire process of keyframing. So once I've done that, I'm good to go. Create swing tracer. And as you can see here, I have a beautiful swing tracer created. Uh, if I wanted to change anything around, I could, for example, change the colors. But I love my backswing to be yellow, downswing red. But for that reason, I want to give the tracer line a different color. I'll do a blue tra tracer line. And here I could also change the backswing color, the downswing color. And again, do I want the line to fade in and fade out? or do I want it to keep it solid at the beginning, at the end, and then after how many seconds do I want the line to disappear? And obviously, how do I want it to disappear? Do I want to have it um, just fade out, or do I want to have it um, trail, basically trail the club head, so uh, trail um, the, the swing in reverse? And yes, I can set the thickness, but I think 25, and below is is a good is a good good thickness for the swing tracer but again you can do um a, a, anything you want you can really play with it and find out what's best for you then another feature uh would be ball tracer and putt tracer but we don't have any of those shots right here we should have done actually that's that's maybe just a separate tutorial that so that this one doesn't get too long but uh it works more or less the same as the swing tracer does. It's a different option, but basically you're setting impact frame. That means this, the moment the ball starts going into motion and then you're just marking each keyframe just like we did with the swing, swing tracer. And you can skip as many frames as you like. Um, here again, I would suggest uh, not skipping the, the frames where the ball, for example, reaches the peak and then starts its descent. So anything that's, that kind of resembles a curve you should definitely um, mark more frame, more balls in the frames than in a, when, for example, the putt is rolling in a straight line. You can skip at least 10, 20 frames if that's the case. Let's track back a little bit and return to a uh, shot tracer. So the shot tracer feature, because I actually skipped one part that I really wanted to talk about, and that's our masking tool. And the masking tool allows you to um, to mask out the line if, for example, the tracer line flies behind trees um, or, or other fixed objects in the scene. For example, here I have, I'm hitting a three wood over those trees and the, the tracer line actually lands behind the trees, but because there's no mask, the line looks as if it landed in front of the trees. If I want to export that video with the line being behind the trees, I just need to mask it. And we have a special tool for that inside Shot Tracer Pro, it's called Mask, and it allows me to set the thickness of my paintbrush, and then all I need to do is paint over the area where the line is, um, where I want the line to basically disappear. So in the exported video, it, the line will basically um, be uh, transparent in that exact area where I've just masked um, that kind of pur uh, purple pink color over the area where the line was in order to have it um, in basically transparent in the exported video. So that is uh, Shot Tracer Pro in a nutshell. Unfortunately, well, good for you guys, bad for me because we are releasing new features on essentially a weekly or two weekly, two week basis, meaning that um, in about a week or two, I'll have to 
update that whole uh, tutorial video as we will be introducing more and more features. But this definitely gives you a very, very broad perspective on um, the main tools within Shot Tracer Pro. So I hope that it helps you. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, need any help, please reach out to our support team. They're very, very helpful in terms of getting back to you, uh, answering your questions, walking you through different features within the app in person. So make sure to email us and we're happy to help. All right, so that's Shot Tracer Pro for macOS and PC and I'll see you in the next one.